Hi guys, welcome to Genre Summit 2. I'm excited for today. We have another great session for you. We are with publicist Liz Rodriguez, and she's gonna dive deep with us, everything, all our questions about working with the publicist, why we need to work with the publicist on our films, and all that kind of stuff. So first off, Liz, I wanna say thank you for taking time to be with us here at our event. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted, truly. I'm honored to be part of it. Cool, well, you know, before we get into our you know, questions, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and how did you get into publicity and you know, working in film? So, um, wow, well, um, I have a marketing and uh, marketing degree out of London, and I started working as a, as a communication specialist out of London, was later headhunted to work in Spain. When I was working in Spain, um, I was, because I speak fluent Spanish, I was asked to help on a film production of a movie that was made in 2003, locally there in Spain, as, uh, as trying to help generate some interest, a buzz, and basically get them extras. So we ran a bit of a radio campaign to get some extras to turn up. It worked. We did the, the film premiere. It worked. And then all of a sudden, word of mouth got out, and I became the go-to person that spoke English for productions that wanted to be filming on location in Spain. Uh, that was over a course of five years. So it wasn't just like happening overnight. It just took, it just took time, but it rolled. And then in 2004, um, I became quite busy just in general as with PR and working outside of what I was doing full time. So that, that actually took over. So working on my own PR took over my full time job, if that's possible. I had no sleep. So in the end, I cut the apron strings and decided that I was going to go it alone and formed EMR Media, marketing, branding and PR company. And we're now in our 12th, 13th year. And I started in May 2004 with a Hotmail account. And now I have a team and we do red carpets and we help filmmakers. And yeah, that's basically... And the rest is history. The kind of, yeah. I, mean, I think really the main thing that started me with with film is the fact that in 2005 I was approached by somebody who wanted to do a film festival in Spain and in Marbella, Spain and um, I was kind of that go-to person and someone had recommended me and in the end I really helped develop that and by going into Cannes Film Festival and by getting to know the film industry in general um, I was able to sort, help them sort through and filter films and international films so that we had a bit of a market at the same time having really good movies that we could premiere there. It was a three-day event uh, the first year. It's now in its 10th year and it's still going strong. But I learned a lot. I met a lot of people. Um, and I've worked on a lot of productions since then as a unit publicist or a film publicist or even just marketing. Wow. I mean, you know, just listening to that, I, I, I got a lot of insight. It took you, when you were first starting off, five years, you know, like on and off. It just shows like whatever, you know, crafts, whatever market you're in, no matter, it doesn't matter. It's going to take time and you just have to yeah. stick with it. Yeah, but it's not just that. People need to trust you. And trust as a publicist, as what I do today, you know, with market. I mean, they're called publicist. I mean, it's kind of like that. But really, PR comes under the umbrella of marketing, branding, and communications. And that's what I studied in. So communications is how you communicate. And PR is actually the way that it's described here in L.A. Um, whereas if you go into London, it you, you wouldn't really say a publicist or a publicity or, or promotion. It, it's just different. It's part of communications. But um, building trust delivering, doing what you say you're going to do, you know, and and really exceeding expectation is what's really important. And and it just takes time because people are used to working with their teams, they're working they're used to working with bigger agencies, PR agencies that which have got a great track record. So when you're a newbie and you're coming in, you really are working which my niche was with the independent filmmaker. Um, studios already have everything organized, but the independent filmmaker the film festival filmmaker, you know, the ones that I had met along the way, they're the ones that need the leg up and they're the ones that I help the most. Right. And, you know, that's really, you know, that's why we're really happy you're here. Most of us are on that independent level and we're guerrilla filmmakers and, you know, we're really good at writing or we're good at directing, but we have no idea about marketing or, you know, getting our film into film festivals. So just kind of like, you know, at a basic level, 
uh, you know, unit publicist or like just the other kind of publicist. Can you just tell us like what's the meaning of, you mentioned it briefly that publicist in like England, it's kind of like marketing and communication. Can you just kind of give us like a brief overview of like, you know, what, what you do with your day-to-day -day tasks and, you know, what is unit publicist and other kind I'll of publicists? I'll explain. Let me split it up because there's different types of PR. I mean, there's the marketing and the branding teams and then PR falls within a company, within an agency, right? So we do marketing and we do branding. The PR aspect of it is broken down into what I like to call three different areas. So I like to call it unit publicity, film publicity, and personal publicity, personal PR. So unit PR is literally what it says. You're a line item in the budget, in an independent film or studio film, you're a line item, you're below the line item, and you're budgeted for, but you are with that unit. You're part of the production unit, which basically means you go with. You normally, you're at least on set, for one or two of the weeks, you don't have to, especially for an indie film, you don't have to be on set all the time. It's expensive to have a unit publicist with you. But for me personally, um, I will go on set for a minimum of three days. Normally when the chunkiest of scenes are being done, where everyone is has been called on to set, there might be an ensemble, and we'll do a day in the life of the director, a producer, behind the scenes interviews. We coordinate with the stills photographer. We want to be there working with the stills photographer on set because that guy's you know whoever it is are taking pictures and capturing the behind the scenes the publicist the unit publicist then will work with that photographer to create that lookbook it's part of the assets of the film um so unit is just that you're a line item you're part of the unit that goes on locations or gets flown into a location or it's normally better on a location than in a in a studio environment because they can absorb more and and also you can invite press if you want to, if you want to have exclusives and they will call, that unit will, publicity will coordinate whoever's going to be on set. There are also troubleshooters on set. So anyone that's not supposed to be on set, the unit publicist can really help. I've had many instances where um, I've been working on a production and uh, press have decided to come in. Um, media outlets that we don't particularly want to have on set at that precise moment. Um, and the publicist, the unit publicist is in charge of really, you know, keeping everybody, they're the, the middle person, they're the middle guy, they're the producer, producer can go to the unit publicist. The, the, the director doesn't tend to, but they're the center to help protect and troubleshoot when on set. So that's the first one. Film publicist. A film publicist, which is I'm often asked to do because an independent filmmaker doesn't always have uh, the budget, you know, their budget is all about getting the film made and normally an, uh, an indie film doesn't have enough for post-production because they don't realise how much post-production is actually going to cost them until after the fact. You know, they have a bit of a budget but they never really allow enough. And so PR just isn't in the equation. It's like, whatever, we'll figure it out amongst us. One of the producers is going to wear that PR hat and we're just going to figure it out, right? I get it. It's okay. So a film publicist is normally the one that at the beginning, when they first, everyone's first got their money, thinking, oh yeah, you know, we've got a bit of cash, let's spend it on a PR, let's make an announcement to Deadline Hollywood, Holly Reporter to Variety, if it's noteworthy with a cast, or let's try and generate a little bit of a buzz uh, by doing one press release or just a, a little bit of a campaign to get a buzz going. So the film publicist will handle that, and the film publicist will then handle the post release, the post press, it's wrapped, it's this, or, or announcing when it's going to be released is normal I mean in general um the film publicist is more like bespoke PR for the film and if you want to think of it in sort of categories a unit publicist is travels with you know and you're with it from the beginning of pre-production all the way through to when that film has sold almost when it's on its uh cash cow situation right so all the way through its life cycle of the film um and then personal PR is when you handle publicity for an individual like the director, the producer, normally cast, and you're hired as personal PR. Because uh, a film publicist and a unit publicist, which could be one of the same person, um, just different duties, they are focused on production in general. They've got to list everybody, they've got to get every point across, whereas personal PR is just about you.
Wow. I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's so many hats, you know, that the publicist does that, you know, we don't even put into consideration. We do so much more than that as well. Because we, you know, when you've got your stills photography, we'll sit there and we'll work out with a lookbook, like on a Dropbox or something, it's real simple. You don't have to be in the same state, but we will decide what we think of photos that are good to be released to the press. You know, that first picture that image also that's classed that you can put all those images into the epk and the electronic press kit the publicist puts together for you these are assets yeah, these are the film's assets it's the you know first impression leaves a lasting right. in this industry. social media social media they'll start your facebook they'll start your twitter they'll start your instagram they'll start all of that they'll get your followers they get the buzz all the press they'll load up onto the social media network it's it's a it's brand you're branding the film and the publicist can help you do that. Definitely, and that's you know a very important part of, of that whole process. And with that being said, you know, can you just tell us like when should a filmmaker look to work with a publicist? Would you like a first time filmmaker is like you know they're just fresh out of film school, they have this big project that they've been trying to put together the last couple of years, or would you say that maybe they need a little bit more experience and like you know a couple of films under the belt, or like would you work with a short film? Can you just tell us like when do you think in a filmmaker's uh, career should they uh, try to you know work with a publicist? You know what I think. Um I mean, call me biased, but I think it's important that marketing and a PR strategy is actually part of the production process. I believe that by bringing in a publicist right at the beginning, someone that can help you with that strategy, how you want to have all about your film, whether it's a horror film, a thriller or romantic comedy, whatever it is, whatever genre of film, you should bounce it off a publicist because they know what the market's going to be able to... What, what media are you going to get? What media attention? They know what's happening out there. We, I mean, we've got our finger on the pulse constantly. We know, we know what type of genre. We also know distributors, by the way. Publicists know sales agents and distributors. I work with a pool of them. I work with a whole... I, I work with a pool of them. So having a publicist that has been in the business as long as I have now, you know, I've been doing marketing and branding and PR for like 20 years, but my own business for 12. So in those 12 years, I've met a lot of sales agents, some that don't even exist anymore, a lot of distributors, foreign distributors, domestic distributors. I mean, publicists work with these guys because we work on the red carpets. We work with the events that that for films. They're a great source. They're a great resource to have on your team. Yeah, especially, you know, as the independent level, we don't really have these contacts and networking is a very important part of, you know, right. trying to get our film into these big festivals. Well, you can get into the big ones because, you know, everyone wants to be at the top. They want to be at the, it's Toronto, which is coming up. They want to be at Venice, which is happening now. They want to be, you know, at Berlin Ali. They want to be, uh, of course. But you can't just, and I don't want to say you can't because there's no such thing as can't. But it's difficult and more challenging um, unless you've made a name for yourself. You can make a name for yourself with a short film. You can make a name for yourself. I mean, I've helped produce short films. Because publicists can do that too, by the way. Right. They can, they know everybody, and they can help put you in touch. Yeah, with your everybody. job just sounds kind of like you know a lot of produ- like a lot of similarities that a producer does on set. And right. well, no, a producer does that on set because they can't afford a publicist. Right. I'm sure a producer would rather just focus on getting the money right, right, in right. and wrap it and getting the cast the involved. Production and getting to production and then wrapping and then getting a great quality film product at the end of it. I'm sure that's all a producer really wants to do with the director, you know, I'm sure. But unfortunately, um, you know, there isn't always enough budget to cover for a publicist. And so they have to, producer always wears that hat. I mean, some do it really well. And some, you, as a publicist, we've I've come in at the end of it saying, oh gosh, really? Okay, let me see how I can fix this. Let's see what we can do to make this work a bit better. Right, because you know, if it's a great film, if it's a great product, and you know, it doesn't nobody sees it, then that would just be a waste. That you know, that's where the publicist comes into play and really tries to like make a push for the film. Yeah, but the right publicist will do that, and right. the right publicist is, is on your team. Like, I can't pick up a project just because someone's going to pay me to do something. I have zero interest in doing that. So for me, I have to feel passionate about something. You know, I can even help with with the way that. Not every publicist is going to be doing that, though, mind you. You know what I mean? I think everyone's just a little bit different. But if you feel something for the project and you feel something for the filmmaker that's trying to tell their story and it's a good story, 
It doesn't have to be have an A-list or cast member, but you know for distribution it always helps to have at least one name in there. Um, but at a film school, you just have a great story and it's just got to be shot well. And then if you can get a publicist that believes in you, then you'll stick with that publicist. And I've worked with AFI and a bunch of other um, uh, in more, uh, you, know, you, you know, universities, so, you know, UCLA and, and U, um, USC filmmakers, and they've stuck with me. Because if you believe in a director, or you believe in a producer, or you believe in what they're trying to achieve, achieve throughout their career, then they, you should be part of their team. Right. Yeah. I mean, it takes a lot of teamwork to make the dream work. It's just a little cheesy saying, but, you know, so let, let's say like a filmmaker comes to you, you know, like uh, they have this passion project that they have. And uh, can you just tell us like, what's the first thing that you're going to like, you know, whenever you take on a new client, like, can you just tell us about how that communication is? Like, you know, what do you, what's the first thing, the most important thing that you tackle? And I mean, I know it's like, you know, you just mentioned a lot of things, but can you just kind of tell us like, how does it like the day to day uh, go with that when you just, you know, start a new project? So do you mean at the beginning, if I'm approached right at the beginning of the project, or do you mean if I'm approached where often we are approached at the end? Right. Well, I mean, if you wouldn't mind sharing both, both different avenues. Uh... Because th there normally isn't enough money in the budget to warrant, you know, to want to put a, a marketing and PR strategy in place for a film, because most people are just trying to, you know, rally together, grab their friends and, and whatever have you, you know, to make their project come alive, right? To make their script jump off the page. Um, if I'm ever in the luxury of being at the beginning of that process, then I personally, I would help with casting suggestions and how to get more, more value from production with different PR and strategies and angles and... I, I, there is no hard and fast rule. There really isn't. I mean, you can read a script. I can read, you know, 30 pages of a script and be like, wow, God, really? They're going to make that? And it's only going to cost 100 grand? This is exciting. I want to be part of this. You know, and I, I think every project is, everything that I do is tailor-made. I, I can't give a hard and fast rule, but to come in at the beginning of the project is ideal because you can go through the process with the filmmaker and make suggestions of what might be market for marketability purposes right you know what's going to sell and you right. know what's really not what's going to make the going to a film festival and you know the dramas and things like that you know what kind of script or whether it should be tweaked slightly but you know it's not my place because I'm not that filmmaker I can only make light suggestions at that point and whether it's you know because it's really not up to the publicist at that point, because that's a producer hat. Right, right. But I can help with marketability and guiding and suggestions. Um, and then afterwards, when the film, which is normally when we come in um, for an indie or a short film, I normally help with packaging assets. So I'll find out what you've got with regards to stills, what you've got with regards to interviews on set. You know, was anyone doing that? You know... I, there's a whole list of stuff that for assets that you can have towards the EPK because those press kits need uploading to film festivals these days. I don't know if you know much about all of the film festival process, but they want to see everything. They want to see a poster. They want to see a mini trailer. They want to see assets. And that's what the publicist puts together. Right. And uh, I was going to ask about that. So like if a film does get into a, like a big festival or like maybe even like a medium sized festival, can you just kind of tell us like, uh, would it be in the filmmaker's best interest? I mean, obviously, this is probably like a biased question, but like, you know, to work with the publicist and do everything that I you mean, mentioned. Or can... The film festivals have, you know, I've worked with some of the big film festivals and I've worked with some more indie film festivals, more local. And obviously, I started up a local film festival. So um, there is normally a publicist that works with the film festival that you can lean on. But, you know, you I don't know. If you can afford to spend just something on some form of PR, get a buzz going, certainly, you know, have some social media platforms in place, you know, use social media, the Facebook and all the, the Twitter and everything, trying to generate fans within that genre and beyond, it, it's helpful. Um, when when a publicist picks up, you know, they can present you on the red carpet, and there is, film festivals do have publicists, but they're working for everybody. And so you really... <laughs> It's hard because I don't want to say you, 
you must hire a publicist. That's not what I'm trying to get across. I'm trying to give a balanced view whether whether it's worth your dollar spend because those dollars were really hard to come by. You probably had to, you know, as an independent filmmaker, you probably remortgaged or your parents have remortgaged their house and you've begged every aunt, uncle and friend and teacher to help put even, you know, something in an Indiegogo campaign for you to make your dreams come true. So why now spend it on a publicist? So, and it's really a fine line because you have to find the right publicist. Right. As and well, that isn't just going to accept the dollars and not do the work. That's, you know, I'm really glad that you said that because a lot of other of the speakers have been telling us that you have to really be careful with the people that you work with, especially in this town. Like a lot of people are shady. You just have to do your background research and make sure that, you know, they're not just going to take your, you know, they're not just going to bill you or quote you and they're actually going to do the work. Right, right. And unfortunately, you know, for the filmmaker, a publicist paid up in front. A, a publicist invoices up front is paid up front. And they you, then they say the wording, but there's no guarantee I'm going to get you on deadline. And there's just no guarantee I'm going to do this. I, I, I don't know. I, just call me British. I can't do that. Um, if I don't have a clear vision of where a film's going to go and that I can see it at Toronto or I can see it at, say, Burbank Film Festival here locally or I can see it wherever, if I can't see a way in which I'm going to pitch it to get that filmmaker in, I just can't. I prefer not to take the, the job or the money because it's too much of a headache. Definitely, and I can't be done with it. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, you know, time is time is uh, very uh, precious. Right, right, right. But if someone's got a great movie and it's in, like, you know, and it's a good genre, and you can say, okay, you know, I can see you're a horror movie. I can see that Dread Central's going to pick you up. Like Disgusting's going to pick you up. Shocky's going to pick. You. I can see all of this. I've got this. And it's also, you know, you've got to find a publicist that has relationships with your genre type of genre film publications you know so you can't promise the top the top tier of publications because you're an indian you unless you have this is controversy running around it might not get picked up by deadline of the holy reporter or someone for example sake but you could go to it depends on the genre but having a publicist that no has relationships with those publications you're halfway there because they can make a call and say hey can you do me a favor i promise i'm going to give you this bigger one I'm going to give you an exclusive on such and such. But what I really need you to do is help me out with this right now, and that's how I finish. You know, that's that's really cool to hear because, like I, you know, like I was saying before, a lot of us don't really have any connections, and we really need that extra push. And you know, it might it might cost a little bit for uh, a filmmaker to hire a publicist, but at the end of the day, if you're going to you get know, some PR out of it's, it, uh, we're looking at it as an investment in our career. You know, we want to get to the next level, so that's only going to help. You know, so uh, can you tell us, like, you know. Uh, working with a boutique, you know, PR agency kind of like yourself compared to like, you know, like one of the bigger ones, like is there any advantages to either or, or uh, can you just kind of share your light on if, if, a, if a filmmaker is ready to like really invest and work with a publicist, can you just give us your perspective on, you know, like the bigger kind of agencies compared to like the smaller mom and pop shops? Well, you know, I am one of those publicists, one of those firms that actually work with big guys too. So... I work because they run red carpet events and big studio premieres. I'm friendly with absolutely everybody. So um, I guess I don't think there's a pro and a con. And I'm going to say it depends on who you gel with as a publicist and who you fit with. And if you've done your due diligence and they've presented you with case studies, because I can present case studies. I have personally, I have a history and I can present which publications I've been in and et cetera, et cetera, have I got my clients into. We all can get you in. Every publicist should is, works with the same publications, but can they guarantee that you're going to get in there? Yeah, all the bigger agencies can because they can leverage with some of their bigger stars, bigger pub, bigger films, for example. They can leverage the bigger one. In, like I just said, they can finesse it. Everyone can. Um, there are only a certain amount of publications so it's all about relationships. I don't think it matters whether you go with a big agency if you've got that kind of money and have the name behind you to say that you've... Because some people like that. You know, they like to say that they're with Slate, PR, Rogers and Counter, BWR, and they like that. And I love working with these guys, by the way, too. Um, and it's important that as publicists that we gel with everybody. But I, I don't know. I think it's a personal preference. I think if you if you want the level of attention, you just have to interview some publicists and find out if you feel 
that firm or that agency or the boutique or even just a single publicist running around on their own is going to give you the level of attention and the exposure that you want. It's all about expectation and managing that expectation. Right. And, you know, with that being said, you... Does that make sense? It, it, it was around uh, the houses, I know. Oh, no. I want, <laughs> I want you uh, to dive into that in a little bit. But, you you know, you've been telling us, like, uh, what you kind of look for f- from the filmmaker p- perspective. You have to make sure that you're passionate about the project, that you see that I it has... I need to make sure that I can deliver. Right, that it has potential. But can you tell us, like, you mentioned it briefly just now, but as a filmmaker looking to work with the publicist, like, what are some red flags or what are some bullet points, you know, that they need to look for, for a potential publicist to have their back and to really, you know, as you were saying, that they I, do their you work. You know what, I, I don't know because I've had, I've heard horror stories that somebody's given, but you know what, there's two sides to every tale. And so sometimes I've heard horror stories where I've come in at the back end and had to rectify or try and generate a buzz because the initial person that was hired didn't. But that could have had a lot of variables as to why that publicist didn't deliver. It could have, maybe they didn't have things on hand. Maybe they just didn't end up gelling. Maybe they just didn't understand the concept of the film or the filmmakers as well as they thought at the minute at the beginning. Maybe they did just take the money and run. You know, every, it's just, there's too many variables. And this is, I think, where the problem is with the indie filmmaker because, you know, you don't want to take that risk. And so because you don't want to take that risk, you don't bother t- taking it. That's why the producers end up wearing the hat. So you don't take that risk. But when you do take that risk, and if you find a publicist that you can work with that believes in you, believes in your project, and really is going to advance you, I bet you stick with them. And right. that's what happens. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a calculated risk that we all have to take, right? You know, I think you have to... The other thing... i tell you what happens with me. I don't really tout for business. I'm recommended. And I think... I don't advertise, I don't do anything. I am literally on a recommendation only, the way that I work. I'm recommended by different other filmmakers or perhaps film festivals or, or, or even attorneys, managers or agents. I'm actually recommended. Because managers and agents, when it comes to talent, when it comes to actors, um, you know, they kind of know where they're gonna, where people are gonna fit and who's gonna bring the best out of them. I mean, if you, you're dealing with an A-list, then, you know, the the agencies like, you know, William Morris, UTA, Para, you know, ICM, they all have their go-to PR firms that they're used to because they can deliver. An indie filmmaker needs to do exactly the same thing. They need to find the person that is their go-to. Yeah, definitely. And uh, It's hard, though. It's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's, it's very stressful. Like, just, you know, hearing you say all this kind of stuff, but, like, in a good way. And, you know, hopefully it's going to help with the You film know, and... you can have other options where you say, look, I've got, like, a grand I can spend on this. What can you do for this money? And if it fits what you want, what can you guarantee? Well, everyone always says, what can you guarantee? Like, well, I don't know until I see the finished film. I don't know if you're going to cut it, like, you know, crappy or what you're going to do. I... I you know, the script reads nice and your cast seem, you know, solid, but I don't know whether it's going to flop or not. I mean, how does anyone, even the studios don't know if something's going to flop or not. Look at the billions of money that they throw into something. Right. And that's film, that's entertainment though. Yeah, so uh, it's all kind of aspects. And, you know, you mentioned something interesting there. You said that, you know, you, you saw that the script was kind of good. So I want to kind of, you know, our audience, uh, you know, where like half of us are just exclusively like writers and the other half are kind of like, you know, filmmakers and writer directors. So just coming from the point of view of just a screenwriter, you know, he has he or she has no interest in directing or filmmaking, but just really passionate about writing and screenplays. Uh, would, is there any work that a screenwriter can potentially do with a publicist? Or would you just kind of say that it just has to be like with an overall, you know, film production? No, scripts. I mean, scripts get put into film festivals and when best script or, or something like that, that, some film festivals actually have a category for scripts. Right? Right, right. Yeah, and the screenplay competitions and There you stuff. go. So there's screenplay competitions. So I don't think it's any different. Right. I don't think it's any different. It's harder for a publicist. It's actually harder to promote. Just the uh, screenwriter. Just the screenwriter. It's just the uh, script. It's, just right. words on the page. Right. It's harder. It's not undoable. It's just harder. Also, it's, also you know, if the script wins that's when you really should capitalize on getting PR. Up until that point, you probably, you know, right. 
So can you just kind of share, like, uh, if a screenwriter does win some awards, like, can you share any, like, advice, like, how they can kind of help get noticed, or what would you do if you were going to work with a writer? Well, you might set a press, press release out and try and get as many interviews for that screenwriter um, to talk about, you know, the process of the... I mean, a typical question would be, um, you know, why did you come up with this storyline? You know, who did you... Ha- did you have this person in mind? Do you have anybody in mind when you were writing this this script, you know, this character or this character breakdown or, you know, what did you have? Did it, were you influenced by anything or, you know, did you experience it? Did you have first-hand experience? There's hundreds of questions that you can ask a screen um, play writer on how they, how the process went for them that is interesting, right? So if it's an interesting story, then chances are it can get picked up. But if your publicist that you hire has an in with publications or they write for the publications or something like that, of course, it's more advantageous because you guarantee... I write for several publications now. I'm an authorised contributor to different movie magazines. Um, so I have a level of guarantee. Some other publicists do that because I want to guarantee that I can get my clients' interviews. Right. No, that's, you know, that's really cool to hear. But it, you know uh, what? Not everyone's like that. But if you... Not everyone's like that. But And it's a lot of work. But... If you believe in something, then right. You make it. You make it sound like it's so easy. So, but I'm sure that you know, like this blood and no, sweat. No, it took me happens. ages to be a contributor, a contributor, a writer to some really big online magazines, and I don't always use my byline. I often don't, and that IMDb news reported, you know, partners, news desk partners that I work with, because that then will go on your IMDb profile, and people will start looking, and you know, um, it helps generate and build somebody's individual profile like screenwriter or director or producer or something like that definitely and uh you know i'm sure you know that the industry is always changing you just you, you mentioned that a few times so i kind of want to get your perspective on like you know the digital world that we live in like how has that kind of influenced uh the point of view from the publicist like you mentioned kind of like the social media and stuff like can you just tell us like uh, what kind of stuff do you do online to kind of help uh, the filmmaker or, like, the film whenever they get it? Is it, like, totally different than how it was maybe 15 or 20 years ago? I think was... everything's really open to us now, but there's, no, there's, there's a pros and a con, right? So the pros are that there's a lot of... That, that you can get out there, like, as a publicist, I can write on certain blog outlets, I can, you know, make sure that someone's published, for example, with their story... You can then get those links and put those on your social media to generate more eyes and it's more sharing, which means more eyes. But the downside of having the internet now for 25 years, happy birthday to the World Wide Web yesterday, um, having the internet and there's so much content that it's just, there's just too much. It's an ocean. It's a, well, it's, it's also there's just too much. Whereas before we used to pick up, you know, Variety and back in the day and the Hollywood Reporter and to find out, you know, all our go-to news. Now there's Deadline Hollywood, which is like amazing. Um, there's all sorts of, you know, you've got The Wrap and you've got all the indie wires and you've got all these different um, flickering myth, uh, Movie Marker, you've got all these different outlets now that you can tell your story to as a filmmaker that can help get eyes on but it's just all it's all content unless someone's willing to go in and and read it it's just does that make sense right so how there's a lot you have to make sure that you're getting to the websites that have a lot of traffic and have a lot of eyeballs because it's not but though always they do have a lot of traffic and a lot of eyeballs but then there's also a lot of a lot of stuff so what's to say that yours is going to get noticed more. Right. So you have to make sure you get that featured article. No, the publicist does that. And I can't tell you all the tricks of the trade. I'm oh, going to okay. be honest. Okay. So, but there are tricks to the publicist's trade right. that can help. And that's help. the advantages of working with the publicist. because You, you have know, those... we have tricks and right, put the right, trade right. up our sleeves. And that's what NDAs are for. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. That's funny. <laughs> but, no, yeah, but, we, yes. but what, I, what I'm saying, what I'm trying to get across is to get something noticed, the more eyes, the better, right? It can't go viral unless you've got people are talking about it. The more shares that you get, the more... I think, you know, it's important for me personally that when I work with a filmmaker that they've built their own, a little bit of something themselves. Or, you know, if you're a student, it's a student film that you've got everyone, at, you know, on campus buzzing about it to help generate eyes. Because the more shares, the more views, the better. 
But if you have a press pack with all the stuff you're, and you've got a fan following and you've got, you know, your niche, your, you know, of where, what you've crafted, then yeah, you're, you're, unfortunately the way it is now, it's all about followers and your audience and it's not always about talent anymore. Um, because, you know, I think, I guess you've heard that along the way, right? Yeah, so, you know, your the social media... directors are looking at a bit of this. That's what I've heard, right? Yeah, is that still what yeah, you've been hearing? Yeah, you know, it's your currency, like how many Twitter followers you have or YouTube subscribers. Yeah, you what's know? your value? Right. What is your value to that project? You know, what do you bring? No longer is just talent because you can, you know, shoot a great film and... and but the other talent, if you can make it on a shoestring and, you know, have... A million, something that looks like a million dollars but only cost a tenth of that, that's worth value too. That's, yeah, that's the trick right there. That's valuable too. So, uh, you know, let's say like you, you are working with like a new filmmaker and just like kind of like a new client. Can you just tell us like, you know, what do, what, what do you expect from the filmmaker? Like, I'm, you know, you have a lot of other projects you're doing, but this, the filmmaker is like his passion project. He might, you know, uh, might bug you or, you know, call you a little bit too much or send you too many emails. Can you just tell us like the communication, like what kind of uh, information are you looking for the filmmaker to make your job, uh, you know, easier? Um, I, I mean, you know, I think the biggest thing that I personally look for is an open mind. Because some filmmakers are so into their film projects and into it that they sometimes are a little blinkered that they don't want to see other people's thoughts and opinions to help. Listen, you can listen to every... I listen to advice all day long. It doesn't mean to say I have to accept it, right? We should all be open to listening to different news ideas. So before I work with somebody, I have to make sure that they're going to be able to be open-minded because otherwise I could be just suggesting things and suggesting things and suggesting things, and if it falls on deaf ears, I can't do a good job. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, a lot of other, uh, you know, speakers would say, like, you know, ego is a big play. Into it's it. a huge play. And you get it, though. I get it. I really do. And I work with an awful lot of egos from actors and, and directors and producers, and I get it. But you know what? It takes a team to make a good movie. You co you got to leave your ego at the door. You truly, truly do. Because that ego can't follow you. And it's really detrimental to somebody's career as well having a giant big ego I personally think because who's going to want to work with someone that isn't willing to be part of a team right and I mean you know word spreads about fast oh yeah it does so and listen and you know so for you know again it comes down to who do you gel with you know if if I'm dealing with somebody that has got a big ego or is not willing to budge but all of a sudden they're like oh, actually you know what you might have a point um, then I know that there's room there's wiggle room there. But if they're, you know what, I don't think so, Liz. You know, I'm not sure about that. You know, then I'm like, okay, well, good luck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't need your money <laughs> and your headache. So I think that the most important thing for a filmmaker to, to be is open-minded. I'm not saying you have to change anything. Just be open. And, uh, yeah, this, you know, it's like you said, it's a very collaborative effort. And, you know, most of us... Uh, we're kind of like, uh, you know, as you know, like horror filmmakers or genre filmmakers, just because like... Horror? Uh, yeah, we're just... Yeah, that's one of my strong genres. Just just because, you know, like uh, as an, on the independent level, uh, we Sounds. don't need, need like an A-list Will Smith or, you know, we can... No, yeah, it's a slasher movie. You just, you just, you're getting into the teen audience. Right. Yeah, so, it's a no-brainer. So like, uh, can you share like any tips or feedback, like, you know, how you would tackle like a horror film compared to like a, a drama or like, is there any like, I, I'm not, with, not without, excuse me, without you giving, you know, your two good secrets, <laughs> uh, what are some like kind of like, you know, do-it-yourself tips a, a filmmaker could do to kind of help, you, you know? You know, the horror genre actually is probably the biggest now, right? Um, isn't it? I mean, I'm sure it is. Well, we see, you know, all those movies, they cost less than $5 million to make and they gross like, you know, 50, $100 million. Yes, I've worked office. with several of those. I've worked with several um, movies that were, that, that are household names now um, that were made for 100000 and that were sold domestic for a million. And that's without the foreign gravy, you right. know? So um, that you see on Netflix and stuff now. But um, what can the filmmaker do within the horror genre or with the difference? Oh, yeah. Well, can you tell us both? Like, if we have, like, a horror film, like, any tidbits you can do and, you know, how you would tackle The horror. bloodier, the better. <laughs> the gorier, the better. Okay. Um, because that's how you get into the, 
the bigger horror yeah. magazines. Like, for example, um, you know, Bloody Disgusting. Um, There's bloody in the title. <laughs> right, right, right. And, and they're only interested in that big, you know, the big slasher movies. That's, that, that's their go-to reader, right? Um, there's Horror and Chill, uh, you know, Bloody Disgusting, um, Dread Central. There's, a, there's, I mean, there's the a whole... The list goes on. You know what? There's literally 200 outlets right. that, that do that. Um, and to appeal to these publications, you know, the bloodier the better. Uh, you know, the more gore, the more, the better. So could you kind of share, like, if a, if a filmmaker uh, get, gets a piece on Bloody Disgusting or some other kind of horror outlet, uh, you know, how does that, uh, how does that kind of, like, help? Like, what's kind of, what should the filmmaker expect? Like, are they going to get oh, no, overnight, calls? they're not going to get an overnight success. Okay. And all of a sudden, someone at Universal Studios, where the horror first began, is not going to start calling and saying you're the next... Steven Spielberg. You're next, yeah. So it's just, as you were saying, you have to kind of keep your expectations open and it's, it's going to be a but You know, like, yeah, if you get an article in any of these publications, it's great because these publications are publicizing, you know, you know they're publicizing uh, all different um, horror movies, whether they be studio or independent. So the fact that if you're a real Indian, you really are starting out and you get an article and someone's willing to write about you, well, that's a big deal. That is, because someone's taking time to write about you, they must believe in you, right? Right. So I think that how do you capitalize on that? It's hard to say. You can go into your EPK, you can try and get more fans based on it because you're hopefully bringing over to you the publication's fan base. Right? And if they think it's interesting, and then you're going to stay with that. That fan is going to stay with you. They'll stay loyal to you because they're loyal to the publication. Does that make sense? Yeah, and you know, especially the horror audience, like they're like probably the most loyal. They're very loyal, and the publication will not be loyal because, like, you know, if I put, call into one of the horror publications and I say, "Hey, I, I'm representing this horror film. Um, it hasn't got any big names, but it's pretty cool." And this happens, and I don't want to give you too many spoilers, but I can give you a couple of behind the scenes photos as an exclusive. And they'll be like, really? Okay, because they love exclusive photos. But if you don't have an on-set behind the scenes photographer and you don't have your publicist to look through that lookbook to see which one is gonna fly, then all that is pointless too. Do you see how it all meshes together? Yeah, it, it definitely does. And you know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna step on, on any feet or anything, but uh, could a filmmaker like potentially kind of do this with sure, a publicist? Or? Uh, sure. So, I mean, but, I mean, I'm not you, have the, you have the end though. You have the connection. We've got the, gonna... the publicist has relationships, right. and this business is all about relationships. You know, when you find the right DP, you probably stick with that DP, right? right? And it's a relationship that you build because you've been sweating blood and guts together to make the, the get the shot that you want in a 14-hour day, right? right? So you're gonna go back to that DP. Yeah, yeah? and you know, same thing. It's a uh, if uh, if a filmmaker kind of cold calls the company, they kind of might they might just kind of like wipe it off. Whereas you you have the relationship, you've been working with them for years. Right, but I'm not saying that as an, I'm not saying that you have to to be with a publicist. It's just the fact you'll get more if you get a publicist that can word it in a slightly different way too. I right. mean, wording it comes down to wording. Not everyone can write. I don't know if you noticed that. Oh, I not mean, everyone in, can in write. This town. And I don't mean screenplays. I mean, they, not everyone can write. A good press release. I have people, cheeky people that were well, that I've worked with in the past, or I know my friends and stuff will say, "Hey, I've written this press release, but could you give me your your professional opinion on whether you think that it's going to be okay to fly? What you think of it? Yeah, dude, send me a check. Then I'll have a look at it for you because my professional opinion means I'm helping you. But if you think that you can write it, yeah, everyone thinks that they're a writer that they can do it. But how you how you word a script that's like 90 pages, for example, for a feature, 80 or pages for a horror, you've got a script and you've got to condense what your script is in 350 words, good luck there. Right. And no, I mean, it's really cool to hear because it is a kind of a press release is a kind of different art form. 350, 350, 500 maximum at the top. Just because, you know, you can write a screenplay. I mean, it's a totally different kind of science to a press release compared to the screenplay. Right. And, and publications don't, want to have long exuberant quotes about how it got you 
you know, how you had to knock on every door in the street from when you were five years old to try and get, you know, right. or how the Indiegogo. I mean, sometimes it's an interesting angle, but a publicist can help you decipher what's a good angle and what is not. Right. And I think that that's part of the strategy that they bring to the table. I'm not saying you can't. Of course, everyone, you know, why not? Every every producer wears this this hat. Every producer works on a PR element at some point in their life until they're in a position where they can go, you know what, I don't want to do that anymore. I'm done with it. I'm handing this over because I can afford to hand it over. If you can't afford to hand it over, you just got to do what you got to do to get it done, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be offended if no one, if if somebody, I'm not, I'm not going to be offended if someone just does it on their own. Of course not. Good for you. Yeah, and... Uh, and when you're in a position where you can hire a publicist, then let me know because I'd be happy to help. For sure. And, uh, you know, I will ask a, a few more questions here. And you, I, I was saying earlier, like, I was kind of joking, but you, you really do make it sound like, you know, it is kind of, like, uh, easy. But I, I know it's not. Like, all the behind the scenes and all that kind of stuff. Can you just kind of tell us, like, what's kind of the biggest obstacle that you kind of face uh, from your job, from your point of view? On set? Or just in general? No, just in, just in general. Like, whenever you're trying to get a film in, like, a, in a film festival or just, like, publicity for a project, like, what's kind of, like, the biggest kind of uh, factor that you have to I consider? I don't have hurdles. They're just challenges that you just have to jump over. Nah, nah. Um, I, I truly don't find... I've been doing it for so long uh, that I can't see that anymore. I think at the time it was... The hardest thing is getting past the gatekeeper. When you say gatekeeper, could that be like like an assistant or yeah. what do you, what do you getting mean? through the gatekeeper to make a pitch? Okay. Like if I'm pitching a story, I'm on the phone pitching, by the way. I, I can't just send a press release and hope that it's going to land where it's going to land. I pick up the phone. Hey, it's Liz. I'm calling from LA, I'm calling from London, I'm calling from wherever I'm going to get in that door. <laughs> New York, out of Hebrides. And I will pitch and then I'll follow up with with the email sometimes not everyone knows uh, you know my company of course not that would be arrogant to think that everyone did you know I, I, but the gatekeeper getting past the gate schmoozing the gatekeeper is the biggest challenge for me that, that's, that's really i represent composers by the way right. and i represent a great british composer i represent actors film represent everybody and i'm pitching for them to get on huge like this one composer, my client, I'm pitching constantly for him to work on, to be orchestrated, you know, to be the composer for big films. And I can't just email. I get on the phone and explain who they are. And but just getting past the gatekeeper is the hardest. And I think getting past the gatekeeper in general is tough in this business. Especially, you know, from the writer trying to, like, do query letters to, like, an agent or manager. But, you know, if you have, like, a oh, publicist... You can't, soli- you can't solicit right. someone like me. I've just got someone a new manager today. Oh, sure. I've got a thank you letter. So it's, you know, you can't solicit. You can... A publicist is great for that, by the way. I didn't even think about that. You know, we do so much, it's ridiculous. You know, I, if I'm working with somebody, and I'm sure... And every pub- most publicists that are in are in. You know, they're part of the team. You've got your manager, you've got your agent, you've got your attorney, you know, when you're at that point. you got your publicist, the big four. By the time the filmmaker's check gets, you know, after they pay all their team. Do you know what? I have that situation um, sometimes with filmmakers, but you know what? It's... It's part of the it's part of the job. Yeah, thirty percent goes out the door, the window, and sometimes even forty percent goes out the door before you even. Right. Yeah, but you know what? It's part of building. It takes you are the team. a business. You're a business. You yourself, as a filmmaker, are a business. You are yourself. You are your own brand. Like an actor is a brand. They're a business, right? Right. It takes a team. No, yeah. It's uh, it's just uh, you've you've been sharing a lot of great insightful information with us. Uh, oh, it's hard though when you're when you're really starting out. Oh yeah. And no one's expecting you to have the the manager, the attorney, and you are cold calling everybody, and you are getting the phone put down on you, and you're not going to get answers back, and it is frustrating, and it is heartbreaking, and I have done it when I started out, because who the hell cared, you know? But you, if you stand up, and if you have something, or just a little in, or you go networking, and you meet someone, and you're super nice, and you know, polite, and remember everything about everybody. It's always important to remember little things about everybody so when you meet them again, 
Yeah, that little... Because it's very disarming. Right, that little quirky, you know, uh, little friendly gesture Something, or whatever. Anything, like, anything. You know, and it, yeah, and then you'll be more memorable. And when you're memorable, you'll get through the gatekeeper. Hey, and that's, that's the key right there. Now, I don't mean memorable as in rude. <laughs> right, well, I mean memorable it. as in but something. I thought there was no such thing as bad press, though. You know, I don't know about that. that I guess not. I, you know, not when you're starting out. You don't want right. to right. get on the wrong side of, you know, Cause where how does, your personality is being perceived. Yeah, because where it does, you know, in a small town, it does kind of... Uh, you know, it's so fast. important to... There's a great saying that you didn't, uh, given space, you say, send the elevator back down, but it's really Im- nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. And that's one of my sayings. You're going to kill them with kindness. Well, um, not to kill them with kindness, <laughs> but it's more important to go around and be pleasant, even if they, what, the person that you're talking to doesn't have a clue in what they're talking about or what they're saying. They're frustrating the hell out of you. You're not getting anywhere with them. Sometimes it's just better to go, okay, thank you so much. It was really nice to meet you and walk away right. rather than just keep pounding. It's tough. It's tough. I don't want to be there again. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, but you That's got, what I hope that I really would rather help someone than... I help be independent for me. Right, because, you, I mean, you have to start somewhere and uh, we all got to kind of put in our time in the trenches. And, uh, you know, with time is very important... Uh, can you share like any uh, mistakes that you see potential filmmakers doing uh, in their career or like working with a publicist that we can try to like mitigate so that not if we do decide to work with a publicist, uh, we won't lose that kind of time or that money or that energy? Everyone is unique and individual in their own way. You know, I, unless I'm faced with that, I, you know, it's hard. I, I, you know, I, it's really hard. I have a lot of people that, I tell you what, can I tell you what? What annoys me? No, yeah, that's the serious. Can I? All right. The okay. All right. So I don't get angry about anything really. I'm pretty happy go lucky, right? So, but what I do get frustrated in with it with an independent filmmaker is they've been referred to me, and they've put the call in. Hey, you, Liz? Yes. Um, EMR Media? Yes. Um, so I've got this film that I've just made, and we're just in post production, and I need a publicist. Okay. Uh, what's your film about? Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, it's this. It's that. And the other, okay, well, what, what can you do for me? Well, you know what, I, uh, I'd be good to see some photos, get a, a proper feel for it, if you could send me the script, it'd be good to understand it a bit more. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, that sounds great. And you tell them what you think you can do, you give them a load of advice, you spend an hour on the telephone helping them because you want them, you want to be helpful, right? <sighs> Two weeks go by, they call you up. Hey, uh, remember me? I called you a couple of weeks ago and did a little uh, Yeah, I'm just wondering, what do you think about this particular film festival? Is there anything that you think, have you got an in with them? Because we really want to hire you, but we want to make sure you've got an in with this particular film festival. How can you guarantee that we're going to get into this film festival? Dude, I, I, I don't know. I'm not hired by you right now, and I, I, I'm not sure um, at the moment. But maybe you could do this and this, or contact this person or this person. Four months later, phone call. Hey, so do you remember me? Diddle da That drives me nuts. And I have about three filmmakers that do that to me all the time. And then they recently, after one year of back and forth with me, announced it on Facebook that they just wrapped their movie. You waste an, a year of your life. You could have had a huge amount of PR. And what do you do? Post it on Facebook. Oh, yes, that's one of my pet hates too. When a filmmaker wants to tell their family and friends that they've wrapped the film or they're making the film or they've cast a, a, an actor or something, the first thing they do is they announce it on their Facebook page where they've got 600 friends on their Facebook page. Do you know what? That's the hardest thing for a publicist to come back from because we work on exclusives. We work on exclusive news. So the moment that it hits the internet, whether it's just between your friends or not, the minute it hits there, it's no longer exclusive. It's no longer interesting to any of the publications. Best advice, do not, my best advice actually, do not post on your Facebook or Twitter until, unless you no interest in having it in a publication. Because publications rarely pick it up when it's not exclusive new news. Wow, I mean, it's just kind of like, you know, That festivals. actually, I forgot I should have mentioned that right at the beginning. I mean, I just thought about it now. Well, hey, I mean, you know, we got it on camera. So, that's <laughs> so really, you know, it's one of my pet hates. It's like, you know, helping someone, helping someone, helping someone. I don't mind, you know, helping someone through and spending an hour chatting to them to help them. 
thinking that maybe further down the line, you know, I might... It's relationship building, right? But oh, then you I read suppose. it on their Facebook wall and you think, dude, you wasted all my time and I could have been cooking dinner. Well, Liz, you know, uh, can you just kind of, on a closing note, tell us what are you currently working on and what are we going to expect to see from you in the future? So um, I'm working on a couple of big productions that happen in the Dominican Republic with the actress Catherine Castro, um, where we are uh, helping facilitate some UK productions and US productions to film there because I help with that too. Um, I'm working on a couple of big red carpet premiere events um, for distributors and I'm working on a horror movie that I'm being brought on with. A bunch of stuff. You know, I wear so many hats, it's hard to know. Uh, a bunch of things. Right. A whole bunch of things. And, uh, you know, I'll definitely link out your website. Uh, you know, a lot of filmmakers, uh, you know, are always wanting to try to work with the publicist. Can you just kind of tell us where can we learn more information about you and your work? Yeah. So my website is uh, www. I don't know if you're allowed. To, I don't know if you need to say that anymore. Uh, emrmedia.com. That's so old school, isn't it? emrmedia.com. And um, you know what? There's UK phone number on there. There's a US phone number on there and emails on there. So emrmedia.com. And I think that's probably the best thing. I'm on IMDb too. Cool. And I have a bunch of credits there. Probably, yeah. But okay. Well, well, guys, you know, make sure you check out emrmedia.com. Liz shared a lot of great information with us, so make sure you rewatch this video. And Liz, I just wanted to say thank you for being thank with you. us here again. Thank you. I'm sure there's so many more things that I could have touched on, but we'd been here another hour. Oh yeah, we have you know <laughs> we, have, we have to cut it sometimes. So cool. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thanks.